Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's Insight webinar dedicated to the impact of the general data protection regulation on the smart system integration process. My name is Olivia Huguin. I am Innovation Advocacy Officer at Blue Morpho and one of the happy partners of the Insight project. I will be your moderator during this webinar. Before introducing you our today's speaker, allow me a few comments. First of all, all attendees are on the listen-only mode, uh, which means that you are currently muted. However, um, however, you can send your questions throughout the webinar using the chat box on your screen. And my last point, my last point is about the slide that we will present today. Of course, we will share them with you all later on. But before giving you uh, giving the floor to our speaker, I would like to give you a quick overview of what the Insight project is and why we thought it has to be it has to do with the new European General Data Protection Regulation. Insight project is a European coordination and support action which aims at fostering successful integration of smart system in a broad spectrum of products and application. The major objectives of Insight are to secure uh, the position of smart system integration as a key enabler for uh, innovation to support and develop the smart system community in Europe, to open new market opportunities for smart system integration by better understanding the needs of the demand side. It means that the project aims at unveiling and promoting new functions enabled by the integration of smart system in pre-existing products and processes. Smart systems uh, combine cognitive functions with sensing, actuation, data communication, and energy management in an integrated way. The enabling principles of smart system are nanoelectronics, microelectromechanics, magnetism, photonics, chemistry, radiation. A uh, knowledge base differentiates smart system from system which are purely reactive. And the provision of a safe and reliable autonomous operation under relevant circumstances is a necessary or interesting condition for smartness. It means that data safety is key for smart system integration. We are all aware of the great expectation that, are, uh, that have arisen during the last years containing the very promising market of the Internet of Things. Um, the IHS estimates that, um, sorry, IMS estimates that, sorry, I have a technical issue here. Um, uh, so the, the study estimates that uh, the number of IoT installed base should be multiplied by a factor of five between 2015 and 2025, between more than uh, 75 billion units. And another estimate made by Bain foresee that by 20 by uh, 2020, annual revenues could expect more than $470 billion for the IoT vendors. However, uh, those great expectations seem more difficult to reach than expected. And the main reason for that seems to be a lack of trust in their reliability. Uh, in, a study, in two studies made in 2015, one from KPMG and one from Earth and Young, um, shows that 92% uh, of IoT users are concerned about cybersecurity, and 70% of most commonly used IoT devices contain vulnerabilities. 
Why is it necessary to deal with cybersecurity, privacy, and reliability of data? In a survey of 28,000 consumers, 47 of them see security, said that security may deter them from adopting Internet of Things devices for their home. And security has moved from being a nagging problem to a top barrier as Sorry, as consumers are now choosing to abandon IoT devices and services of a security concern, says a study. And more than two thirds of the consumers surveyed are aware of the recent security breaches, such as hacker attacks resulting in stolen data or malfunction. So today we'll see to what extent can GDPR build, on the, build the still missing trust for the Internet of Things in Europe, thanks to our experts that join us today. So why is, what is uh, general data protection regulation and what does it, why does it matter for smart system integration? The general data protection regulation uh, updates and enforces current legislation on data protection to take into account the increasing amount of data flows in our digital environment and the new associated risks. It defines personal and sensitive data. It reinforces the personal data rights for EU citizens. It details how personal and sensitive data must be handled. And it states the duty of care of the data owners. I go very quickly on this because uh, Jerome will come back to that later on. That's, but that's why we thought uh, the general data protection regulation is a key building block in the new European protection tools against cybersecurity threats and data privacy breach. The aim of the European Commission and the European legislator is to make EU's online environment the safest in the world. And uh, Jérôme will go through more in detail of the, the, the means that the European legislator gave us. This webinar comes after a series of other webinars, which have already examined different aspects of the smart system integration. You can access to the recording and the documentation of our previous webinars on the Insight website. And our speaker today is Jérôme Gorin. Hello, Jérôme. Hi. Hi, Olivia. Thank you to be here with us. So Jérôme is the IT expert of the French Data Protection Authority, the CNIL. He is in charge of analyzing the technical aspect of any case where personal data processings, processing are involved. He is specialized in, co in topics concerning connected objects, web tracking techniques, and health data processing. But before giving him the floor, we would like to know a little bit more about you. And I will ask you to answer a few questions uh, for, the, to, for us to know more about you. So the question is, um, how would you assess your level of knowledge on smart system integration? How do you address the challenges of privacy by design? Are you aware already of what we will discuss today? I leave you, I let you a few seconds to answer the, this question. Thank you. And uh, we have a, a second question to, to ask you. How would you assess your level of interest in implementing smart system solution? So, of course, 
we will, you will receive the result of this uh, survey uh, after the webinar. But unsurprisingly, uh, more than 50% of you all are interested in um, implementing smart system solution. So now I shall give the floor to Jerome. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Could, could I start now? Yes, that's it. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for this introduction, Olivia. So uh, I will talk uh, during my presentation about data protection impact assessment, or shortly called privacy impact assessment, uh, which is a methodology and sometimes a requirement which has been introduced by the general data protection, the GDPR. It's a processor in applying a privacy by design methodology and in demonstrating conformity to this new regulation. So uh, let me first introduce what the GPR is. I mean, to just remind you what, what are the big picture, what is the big picture of the GPR? So as you certainly know, the GDPR has come into force last Friday and it has replaced the European Directive from 1995 for all the state members of the European Union. This is a big changer for both regulators and companies since from now, every personal data processing on European citizen has to comply with it. It offers more rights for citizens, it simplifies formality regarding data protection authority, and it gives more responsibility to companies that deal with personal data. It also gives credibility to sanction for the regulator. In the view of the seriousness of the breach, fines can be up to 20 million euros or 4% of the total worldwide turnover. The GDPR, just a quick reminder, that the GDPR should not be confused with the iPrivacy regulation, which is a proposal for regulation on privacy and electronic communication. So the, the scope of the iPrivacy is more businesses that provide online communication services or companies that use online tracking technologies or that are engaged in electronic direct marketing. Whereas, the GPR applies to all the companies that deal with personal data. And also the GPR should not uh, be confused with the network and security directive, which leads the security requirement for service operator and digital service provider. So as you may know, the, 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 the GPR brings new right for data subjects. So it brings the right to be forgotten first, which is a right for data subject to call for a deletion of data stored by a company, including all the application. It also brings data portability, which is a right to obtain a copy of personal data in a reusable format. It brings class action, which is a right to obtain from data processor to stop breach of data regulation. And it imposes a general principle of privacy in data processing. For instance, for instance, explicit consent has to be given from the data that from the data subject, which require having clear information about the purpose of the processing, the identity, the identity of the data processor, and a clear explanation of how data subject can obtain its different rights, such as the right of access. Finally, personnel of child should not be processed unless consent is given by the order of parental responsibility. Um, I can't change the side. Olivia, oh no, that's fine. Thank you. So uh, the GDPR also brings new responsibility to data processors, as you may know, such as being accountable at any time. So it means that data processor should always keep documentation that prove that they are conformance to the data protection regulation. They can or they should sometimes name a data protection officer that will lead this conformity, this uh, data protection conformity inside the company. Uh, 
With the GPR, privacy by design and privacy by default are now requirements. Um, privacy by design means that any project where personal data are involved should now be designed with the privacy principle in mind. The privacy by default means that privacy options should be placed at the more protective states till the user has given an explicit consent to enable it. And the privacy impact assessment that we will uh, discuss during this, during this presentation is one of this document, one of these accountable, uh, the, the, this documentation that will help companies to prove their conformity. And it's sometimes required by the GPO. Another requirement of the GPO is the data breach notification. So uh, it means that in the case of a data breach, that represents a risk for the person concerned by the data breach, company should notify the data protection of this breach. And in some case, uh, data protection authority can impose uh, the company to notify the person which are concerned by this breach. So now let's focus on the topic of this presentation, which is privacy by design applied to IoT. So the definition of Privacy by design and by default can be found in the article 25 of the GPO. Privacy by design accurately means that this. So uh, I will just read the article 25. It's taking into account the state of the art, the cost of implementation and the nature scope, context and purpose of processing, as well as the risk of varying likelihood and severity for right and freedom of natural person posed by the processing. The control show the controller show both at the time of the determination of the mean for processing and at the time of the processing itself implements appropriate technical and organizational measures such as optimization, which are designed to implement data protection principles such as data minimization in an effective manner to integrate the necessary necessary safeguard into the processing in order to meet the requirement of this regulation and protect the right of that subject. So this is quite a long sentence, but this is the definition of privacy by design. Um, from, from this definition, if I had to summarize, uh, we can easily understand that privacy by design is closely related to data protection principle, which are data minimization, right of the data subjects and security of processing. But security of data processing, security of processing, the article 32 is even more pres prescriptive about the security measure which have to be included in every data processing, depending on the risk hanging over the user. Example of this measure are pseudonymization, encryption, the ability to ensure the ongoing confidentiality, integrity, availability of, um, of the processing systems, the ability to restore the, the uh, availability and access to personal data in a timely manner in the event of a physical and technical accident. And it, it's also a process uh, for regular, regularly, regularly, sorry, regularly testing, assessing, and evaluating the effectiveness of technical and organizational measures for ensuring the security of the processing. So, privacy by design is all of that. If I have to summarize these two articles, Oliver, my slide, my slides doesn't change. Don't know why. Ah, uh, nope. This is. We've been too far. Already. Uh, is it okay for you this this one? Uh, no, uh, uh, I'm looking for the previous one, or maybe it's not the last one. I guess. Oh, 
sorry, just sorry for this. Uh, no, we have to check. I have to. That's not the yes. That's not the final slide, but um, it should be so, fine. What, yeah. what? What? Can I? Can I? I'm just gonna move. Yeah. It would. Sorry, sorry, John. We have a technical issue there. Yeah. So you no have, problem. Yeah. So I, I was looking for this slide. <laughs> that's fine. So if I can depict. What is privacy by design? Um, privacy by design can be viewed as a balance of measure that will reduce the threat of data processing. So I have depicted in this picture the threats that can be opposed to any IoT device. So in this picture, it, you, you will see uh, how privacy by design can be applied to IoT. So in the left, you have the threats. So the threats uh, which are speci specific to the use of IoT device are a fine knowledge in the long term, a centralization of dissemination of data, a lack of information and difficulty in accessing rights, and the vulnerability in the device itself. So uh, to, uh, to, 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 to find a, a, a balance uh or to 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 find some solution to go against these threats uh the the measure that can reduce these threats can be uh if you uh for 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 any of these threats so if you so i will just explain this this picture but on the on the left you find the threats and in front you find the corresponding measure that can reduce these threats so this measure can be like protect the data process. So understand the the, the, the data collection uh, from the from, from the collection to the description. Um, give the priority to local treatment whenever it's possible. Help uh, the data subject to exercise its right, which is the right, the information, the concerns, the right of access, the right of erasure, the right of, of deletion. And against vulnerability, of course, uh, the main measure is to secure the object and the communication, like by using encryption, for instance. So let's be more concrete about how can privacy by design be applied to an IoT device. So in this slide, I will try to illustrate how to use privacy body design on a fictional product, which is a fictional smartwatch that can be used to meet the need of disabled person and of person with reduced autonomy. So the, the purpose of this fictional smartwatch would be to monitor at any time the if condition of its owner and to notify if professional in case of problem. So let's apply the privacy by design, privacy by design principle on this fictional smartwatch. So first, a good report to, uh, to, 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 to apply privacy by design is to examine all the purpose that you plan to, to do that the, 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 the IoT device should achieve. And then to define the necessary collection for each of these purposes. So in this ex example, I will define, I will imagine five different possibles for this fictional smartwatch. So these five purposes will be to display information on the local device, to do action on the smartwatch, and another purpose, which is the main purpose of this, this fictional smartwatch, would be to do telemonitoring alerts to health professional and some secondary uh, purpose would be, for instance, doing medical study. 
And uh, last purpose for this smartwatch would be the remote piloting. So it means that in case of problem, then you can ask for technical person uh, to gain access to the smartwatch and to debug it or to 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 help the person using it. So I have classified this different purpose with their required data path. So a good practice to do privacy by design is first to adjust data paths. Um, it's, it's that the data path has to be adjusted to the processing purpose. So it means that uh, well, I will have to think where this purpose can be done in order to be uh, the more protective for the user. So information and localization can stay entirely on, under the control of the user. So it means that everything will be done local and the data, data processor won't have information about this action. So it means you don't have to take the responsibility of managing this action. Um, for the telemonitoring area, then it's necessary, and medical study, it's necessary that the data which are collected by the smartwatch has to go out from the smartwatch. So it has to be stored inside the server. So that's the data path that uh, I called in to out. And then, the last data pass, which is in, out, in, means that you have uh, some data which will be collected to the server and that will go back to the smartwatch. I mean that the server has to uh, have a feedback from the smartwatch. So this is the third case where the data are stored inside the server and can go back to the smartwatch. So, if I have to, um, doesn't work still. Uh, do you, you can't move the slide? Nope. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, thank you. So, uh, being Privacy by design required first to be compliant with the fundamental rights and principle of the GPR, GPR. So what I've represented in this schema is all the stakeholder and material which will be involved in the data processing of this fictional smartwatch. So in the left there, you will find the user and that will carry, that will wear the smartwatch. Below, you will have the health profession that should be uh, notified in case of problem. Then on the right, you will find the server that will store every data collected uh, by the data processor. On the right, it's a depiction of the algorithm used on the smartwatch in order to do the the the, the, purpose, the purpose of the processing, and then you will find the secondary purpose. So the person from the research, the medical research study. So being compliant with the fundamental rights of the GPR needs first to have an explicit consent for the from the data user i mean the the, the, the person where this the smart shot and this consent has to be explicit which means that he has to have a clear information about the purpose that will be led in the example and in this example the the the, the has you know that the screen of a smart of a smartwatch is small. Then we will have to find the best way to give this clear information to the user. So um, what we 
what we can decide is to, for instance, to use a smartphone that would be paired to the smartphone where the information can be clearly displayed to the user. So now let's see which information has to be displayed. So it's quite, it quite, it has to be like um, explicit. I mean, it has to be complete. So the, the user has to be informed about the identity of the data, the data controller, about where his uh, data will be stored, uh, and if the server are inside European Union, and how the user can exercise his rights, such as the right of access, the right of erasure, the right of portability. Then the information should also include some explanation of the algorithm. I mean, uh, about how the how the 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 how the 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 the, the, the processing work, and it's also have to, uh, to 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 separate all the different purposes to to split all the different purposes in order to define the one which is necessary for the main processing and the one which are secondary for this processing and the one which are secondary for the processing, which are not directly uh, needed for the main purpose, then the data processor has to ask for the consent of the user. Also, the information has to include um, all the person which are involved in the processing and the the, the how which, uh, for instance, in our case, who will what is the category of person that will be able to access to this data. And finally, for the secondary for secondary purpose, then uh, the, 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 the user has to be informed of this that it can that it can consent to do medical research, for instance. So, this is a depiction about uh, regarding uh, the, the regarding the regulation regarding the the, the law. What the what's is the, the main requirements uh, from privacy by design. So let's now uh, depict the technical and organizational measure which is required to be compliant with the privacy by design imposed by the GPR. So uh, being privacy by design means that it's also required to manage the data security risk. So one requirement is. Um, oh, sorry. No, that's fine. Can you move the slide yourself, or yeah, yeah? I, I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. So data collection data collected by the smartphone should be as accurate and minimized as possible. The server that will be that will host the data should be like uh, appropriate should be adequately adequately secured in order to store if data. For instance, by using appropriate encryption in the transmission and the storage. The algorithm that will work on this data uh, could also use pseudonymized data. I mean, they, it, they, they, this algorithm, if it's, for instance, processed by a subcontractor, for instance, can work only on pseudonymized, pseudo, pseudonymized data. So it means that this algorithm can 
work with without knowing the real identity of the user, for instance. The if professional that will uh, be notified by the smartphones in case of problem should always have appropriate access control, which means they need to be all logged with by using strong authentication, strong authentication, and also traceability. And the medical research for the secondary purpose can work, for instance, on anonymized data, which means that uh, the data could be aggregated in order to reduce the possibility for the medical research team to identify or to not be able to identify who is the producer of the data. So all these uh, measures are examples of measures that can be applied to IoT for reducing the risk. This is example of applying privacy by design to the IoT. So we have already seen this slide. So to help a processor or a producer of IoT device, the GPR has introduced several tools that could help data processor to demonstrate their conformity to the regulation. For instance, they have introduced the GPR introduced the code of, the code of conduct, which is a a referential that will list the good practice depending on the sector where the data is processed. So cut of credit is a list of good practice that a professional uh, processor could use to uh, could use or to could could use to um, to reduce the risk depending on the sector is working with. The certification uh, is more like a um, warranty uh, that the products or the processing of a data processor is compliant to the GPO. It means that the data processor who wants to be certified need to pass through a strong revision person, revision percent before being designated as compliant. So one thing to, go to get in mind is that the GPR strongly encourages the development of these tools in order to guide, to guide every sector toward conformity. And one last tool that could help applying privacy by design is the privacy impact assessments. So the Privacy in passive assessment is an overall methodology that, ma that can manage all these legal and technical requirements that I, that I have explained to you before, including also the, the use of certification and kind of conducts. So the next part of my if I can change the slide, yes. Oh, down. So the next part of my uh, presentation will be to explain a little bit to details the methodology for conducting a PIA. So this methodology will be based by um, and it will be based on several guides and tools that the French CNIL has produced. So this is a methodology uh, which is defined. Uh, this is a methodology which is recommended by the French CNIL to, uh, to do PIA. So it is based on what the Article 29 has produced about the guideline that so it matched with the guideline of the article 39 and it also matched with the corresponding norms from the ISO. So if you go on to the right side of the CNIL, you will find 
a lot of resources that could help you to conduct a PIA. Yes. Yeah. So. Just a few minutes. Yeah. Jérôme, I will share the the screen so that people can see the yeah. website of the CNIL. Yeah. Exactly. So this is uh, the web the, 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 the section of the website of the CNIL, which is dedicated to the PIA. So if you go down <laughs> I can close all the tab if you want. Yeah. No, that is why. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It's, it's fine? No, it's okay. We, okay. If we are still there, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone is still listening. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is yeah. still on board. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you will find free resources uh, that will help you in the website of the CNIL that can help you to conduct a PIA. So uh, first, the guideline, the, we have a part which is dedicated to the Article 29 guideline, I mean the view of the Article 29, uh, which is uh, uh, all the data protection authorities from Europe, which are gathered inside uh, one group, and they have produced some um, recommendation or guideline to uh, explain their vision of what is expected behind the guideline. So if you go inside the, 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 the in on the website, then you will find a reminder of this guideline with a visual depiction of what is expected. The CNIL has also produced a software to help people doing their own PIA. So if you go on the second resource, then you find a link to download the software. I, I, I won't have the time to show you the software and it's not installed inside the, the computer which is used to make this presentation. Although you can find a portable version that will work on several OSs, OSs which is Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and you will find also a web version of this PIA software. And last but not least, you will find several guides that will help data processor to 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 to, to, to write a PIA. So can go inside it so you will find four guard for the PAA. So the the the, the third the third the, the, the last third guide uh, more PIA that will explain the the methodology itself. So how to conduct this PIA. So the first one is dedicated to the methodology itself. So all the checkpoints that you will have to have to have a good PIA. The second one is about the template, say how to give um, the, to, to, to give a template for your documents, how to it's some example of templates that could be used for the for some sector. And then the third one is more so if I can go down, I'm not sure I can. Yes. Is a knowledge basis. So it's um it's a list of major that could be applied to a data processing to reduce the risk. And so it includes also how the risk that can apply that can be applied or that can or the risks that can that can that can uh, data processing can encounter and how to reduce this risk. And the last one which is the one that will be used in the rest of this presentation will be the privacy impact assessment, a, a, use, a case example of privacy impact assessments, which is a one which is applied to uh, IoT device. So I will just open it on the new tab there. So this is the guide, this, this is the one. So, um, 
what I can advise you to do is to download this privacy impact assessment and uh, read it uh, because I will talk about it and refer to some pages of the of this privacy impact assessment during the rest of the presentation. So it will be for you a good uh, way to follow the conversation. So I give you some time to download it to find the right documents. And on my part, I will just go back to the slide. Yeah. Up. I have to help you to go back to the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it by your own. Okay. True. That's it. And in so, the meantime, I, I want to highlight what you, just what you've said, uh, Jérôme, yes. uh, that these, these guides are, uh, they are produced by the French uh, Data Protection Authority, but they are really a declination of what has been decided at the European level by the, the what we call the Article 29, which is a group uh, of all European data protection authorities. So this is really in line. This private impact assessment guides can apply to all European um, IoT producers and IoT devices. So this is a this is important. I I think to highlight. Yes, that's perfectly right. Uh, I mean, uh, all the, the all, all of these guides which are produced by the CNIL match the expectation from the RGP, RG, the, 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 sorry, the GDPR. GDPR. Yeah. The GDPR, yes, it's translating French on, on my yeah. side. So from the GDPR, from the expectation from all the data protection authority from Europe, which is yeah. represented by the Article 29, and it also match the norm because the person who are written this guide was also involved in the reduction of the norm. So, okay, um, yes, so I will just unroll this slide. So, if you, if you have the documents in hand, then <clears throat> you will see that this document is uh, is divided in two parts. So the it's 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 including it is including uh, some advices and uh, some example of uh, measure and uh, of uh, checkpoints that uh, I mean. Uh, critical point that has to be checked by data processor when uh, a privacy has to be applied for an IoT device. So as, as, as I said, you will see that this PIA will, is divided in two parts. So the first part is dedicated to compliance with the fundamental right and principle which is the non-negotiable um, requirement established by the law. And the second part is more dedicated to managing the data security risk, uh, which means it will explain the technical and organization control that has been put in place to protect personal data and data subject privacy. So let's dive into the structure. So this document has to be performed by the data controller with the help of lawyers and technical experts and with the supervision of the DPU where it is appropriate. So the first section will describe the context. So the goal of this section is to describe the process itself, the data which are collecting, etc. It can be written by the lawyer or the technical experts. 
So the second section is dedicated to the fundamental principle, which has to be written by lawyers. Its purpose is to detail the proportionality and the necessity of the data protection and how data subjects rights are protected. The third section is dedicated to depict the real privacy risk. So it details the action, the existing or plain control, which is which which is or which will be put in place to secure an IoT device. And also it will depict the risk, it will assess the risk that can then can that can can happen to the data subjects which which use the IoT device. And the final section is dedicated to the validation of the PIA. So it summarizes the threats and measures that have been identified during this data protection, data protection, so that during this evaluation. And if this evaluation demonstrates that the risk, the stakes are too high, then the overall process can be iterated again in order to find over a measure that can reduce the risk. If the identified risks are accepted by the detect controller, then uh, which is now well informed by the risks, then the PI is validated and the data processing can be deployed. So on the let's go if you have downloaded the documents. Then let's go on page two and explain a little bit the purpose of this section. So you will find uh, to illustrate uh, this PIA. Sorry. Um, so the the, uh, the the main objective is to describe to get an overall overall overview about the personal data processing. So you will find that in this PIA, the IoT device, uh, the, 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 the PIA takes into an example, a toy which is fitted with a microphone, a camera, and basic functional buttons. So this, a uh, toy is fitted with a Wi-Fi connection, which can communicate with a smartphone and tablet, and with online service and by data processor. So this is, I mean, this is a description that uh, can explain to everyone that would read the document what we are doing and why you are doing. And more important, it should be, it it should be, like. Very important to understand all, uh, to, the, the, is to the goal of the section is to get a full description of the complete the complete data life cycle from the collection from to the erasure. So it should clearly it should clearly depict for each of these steps which data are collected and by whom and who can access the processing, the storage duration, uh, the, how long the, so, and, the, and the supporting assets. So if you remind the previous slide that I've shown, I mean, the assets will be, for instance, the, the, the toy itself, the server, and all the stakeholder of all the, the, the person which will be involved inside this data processing. So in the if you go now to the second section, which is the study of the fundamental principle, then yes. Are you still there, Olivia? Yeah, yeah. I'm listening okay. to you. Just a uh, reminder that we, we we have a few time left. 
So. Okay, so I will, I will, I mean, I, I will go very quickly uh, about the, 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 this last slides, because I mean, you have the document and the rest of this presentation is about to the, to, to, how to, to, to explain the, this different part. So every information has, has been given before. So uh, for the moment time processing, so it will be on page um for the, on the on the next section then uh, this section is um the, the goal of this section is to uh, assess the control the card counting the proportionality and the necessity of the processing so you will have to explain the purpose the basis the data optimization that has been put in place to uh to reduce i mean to uh to 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 to, to find some guarantee that the uh, the i mean to to find more the necessity of the data so it will be more an explanation about why you need the data to do the processing and also the safeguard that you have put in place to guarantee that the data the data is of sufficient quality and then you will find you will you will have to explain the story duration. So I will go quickly and just explain. So the step three, explain all the security and organizational measure that uh, that is put in place uh, inside uh, to secure the IoT device. Then. To go quickly, one important things to understand about privacy impact assessment is that the goal of the privacy impact assessment is to identify the, the, the privacy risks and the scenario that. Oh, so to describe the scenario that can happen. So. Um, so just to explain what is a uh, scenario, it's uh, it's it's um, it has to to to, um, to to define the privacy risk that to the to the to the data subjects. So the the the, the main objective is to list all the scenario ca that can happen and that represent a risk for the data user. So one scenario uh, identify the source of the risk, which can be, for instance. Uh, external or internal, uh, the support assist the supporting assets which are concerned by the risk. So the hardware, the software, personal network, the data which are concerned by a risk, and then the potential the potential impact on data subjects. So when you have identified this scenario, then you have to uh, evaluate it, the the severity and the likelihood of each of the scenario uh, for free risk, which will be illegitimate illeg illeg access to personal data, uh, unwanted change of data, and disappearance of data. And so the, this document has to explain the control that you have put in place that could reduce the severity or the likelihood of these scenarios. So an example of this measure is the one that I have explained before. So it will be, for instance, using encryption, using pseudonymization, pseudonymization data, or uh, having more strict access control, for instance. So then in the last section, you will find <clears throat> so it started uh, page 32 and it's dedicated to the formal validation of the PIA. So it, summars, it summarizes all the risk that has been notified during the say, scenario description, the, the risk assessment description. And the goal is uh, to uh, to inform the data processor about the residual risk that can happen and the, the 
planet control. So you can find your risk map that will, uh, this one is in French, sorry, uh, but the one which is inside the document is in English. And this hit risk map will help you to visually compare the risk uh, against each other in terms of severity and likelihood. And the circle in gray uh, evaluate the impact of each of these reads before the planet control and the yellow circle determine the civilization after putting in place the planet control. So, so all this uh, information should help the data controller to make a well-informed decision about the current context of the data processing. So if the planet control are considered sufficient and the residual risk are acceptable, then the PIA can be validated. In the opposite, it is necessary to identify the new objective and to find new control, I mean, to reiterate the process and find new ways to reduce reduce the, 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 the this risk. So this is this will be my last slide, Olivia. Okay. So the main mm -hmm. so the, the the main goal of this PIA is to uh, that it's to 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 be validated. So the the PIA should be uh, validated and signed by the data controller. So it must be accessible and communicated. And so the, uh, the 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 if so this is more summary about what is a PIA. So the the the, the objective of this PIA is to assess the risk and to be sure that the data controller will validate the uh, this PIA report, so th that will be uh, that will be ready to support any risk which is described inside this PIA. So the the the, the, the main objective is uh, to to have everyone. Uh, well informed about the risk and to get everyone uh, to 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 get everyone involved inside this uh, privacy by design application for data processing. So it could be useful to, for instance, to publish this document or to dis distribute it inside the, the company, which will be a, a way uh, to. Uh, inform per person or to um, to, uh, to, 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 to help people putting in plan, I mean, to putting all the safeguards uh, possible to uh, secure data processing. So that will be the end of my presentation. I hope you have a lot of questions <laughs> about it because it, will, it has been a little bit short. I'm sorry for that. Well, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry also Jean, to, for this uh, shortened presentation. Actually, yeah. this is a very interesting presentation, but very complex yeah. on an issue which is very uh, strategic uh, mm -hmm. for the application of the GDPR. So this is uh, this is quite tricky to to solve this issue in a, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So thank you, thank you very much for this uh, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to invite our uh, attendees. You can use the, the chat box if you want to 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 ask a few questions to Jerome because this is a very complex uh, question. So if you have more question to to if you have some question which are not which have not been. Uh, Answered yet by Jerome? Please uh, ask. You can ask them now, and to to give you some time to answer to this uh, to this question, uh, I will just uh, give you um, a remind you of the invitation um, I made in the beginning of this presentation for you to join the Smart System Integration 
uh, community, uh, get some information on Insight and the EPOS, the European Technology Platform on Smart System Integration, which is a network where you can find a lot of information on smart system integration. And I have a few questions for you um, okay. before, we, before we, we leave. My first question is uh, where do you perceive the main added value in smart system uh, solution? Uh, we, we would like you to answer this question because if Jerome's presentation on impact assessment uh, was of interest for you, uh, I guess you have some project in smart system integration. So uh, we, would, uh, we would really be interested in knowing more about those projects. So thank you to take the time to answer this question while you are thinking about some question you have to ask to Jérôme. Um, Jérôme, do you, do you know, do you already have a, a company, some, some companies who dealt with their private impact assessment, do you recommend to, to the company to do it uh, by themselves or to ask for uh, technical support? Oh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, so actually we did, we did a lot uh, at the CNIL because uh, for us data protection, uh, the, the, sorry, privacy impact assessments are not new. I mean, we have work on it. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm quite new in at the CNIL, so I arrived two years ago, and I, I know that two years ago uh, we the, the other person I was working with was already well ending the 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 the, the 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 methodology of the privacy impact assessment. I mean, the guide was already existing too, so it's something which is well known inside uh, inside the. The, the, the CNIL and it was already used outside um, outside uh, data protection authority. It was already used by companies when they was doing some sensitive data pro protection process. So it's this methodology is uh, it becomes a requirement sometimes. Uh, I mean, in, in some case, it became a requirement on the GPR, but we have always uh, advised people to do it. And even if in some case the PIA is not required, we, 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 encourage, yeah, we yeah. encourage people to, uh, to, to do it. And uh, I mean, we have helped a lot of companies to conduct their PIA, I mean, uh, before the application of the GDPR. And if you have some um, some difficulties to reduce the residual risk, then you should send the, the PIA to the, your data protection, depending on the state member you are in. Uh, in order to get assistance to reduce the risk of your data protection, the, your data, the data processing. So it's not new, and it's something that we were working in, and it's not even new for for a lot of companies which were already doing sensitive processing. And about the second question, I would say that. Uh, yes. You have the question, you... I, I don't know if everybody can see it. So the question is, in light of uncertain uh, Brexit in the UK, should UK yes. companies still continue with GPR planning and preparation? I mean, uh, from now on, uh, I mean, the, 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 the GPR starting from the 25th of May still is still applied in the in the UK, so the recreation. I mean, uh, in UK, the uh, this regulation is. Uh, I mean, the data protection authorities of this regulation is the ICO, and uh, it is. I mean, it is still 
uh, it, it is still in um, I don't have the English name for that, but, yeah, it's, but still, the, it's still there. I mean, it still applies yeah, in UK. We have seen that yes. this authority was uh, in the front line to to implement the GDPR uh, yeah. in in UK, and yeah, the, and the website went down during on the twenty fifth of May. So the the website of this uh, you, um, authority is, uh, I think, a, a reference for a lot of UK companies. True, true. And maybe what is important to highlight, maybe you want to, to do it, Jerome, is that if if uh, companies want to make business with Europe, will have to comply whether they are uh, whether yeah. they are uh, European or not. Exactly. It's something that I forgot to tell in the beginning of my presentation. Is that this is. Uh, new uh, th this is a new big things that has been uh, introduced by the gpr is like now uh, every company has to comply with the gpr um, from if a data processing targets a european citizen so if you try to uh, reach the european market then you will have to comply with the regulation, the European regulation, the GDPR, no matter where the, your company is located. Okay. Thank you, Jerome, for those present for those precision. And uh, before closing this uh, webinar, I want to highlight also that the uh, smart system uh, integration community set up a smart system integrated uh, European trademark. Uh, you can ask it. Uh, you can ask it if you want to give the, uh, this trademark to your IoT devices. Uh, it's quite easy. It's uh, it can apply to all. Application field, you can see it's transportation, health, energy resources, manufacturing, transversal topics. So whatever uh, IoT devices you are thinking about, you can ask for this uh, integrated smart system, trademark, the trademark. And it's uh, there is a dedicated website where you can find inf more information on this trademark. And now I will like uh, you to share your feedback on this uh, webinar. Um, um, to help us to uh, organize the, for the upcoming webinars, do you want to receive more information on the INSIGHT project? I, I will ask you to answer this question so that uh, we know if you need more uh, information on Insight and if you want to integrate the smart system integration community. Thank you very much for your vote. This is, uh, and still, if you have some more questions, don't hesitate to ask them now. If we don't have time to answer them now, we will uh, send you the answer. Thank you very much for your answer. And the last question I would like you to answer is, how would you evaluate this Insight webinar? Uh, your interest for this webinar. I hope it has been useful and uh, I, I hope it gives you a more clear view of what the privacy impact assessment is and what you will need, um, what you need already to, to comply with the GDPR uh, expectation in terms of privacy and data protection. Thank you very much for your answers. I 
Did you sometimes to to vote? And then again, I, I invite you to send your question. If you have further question, we wouldn't have time to. If you think about further question after a while, don't hesitate to get in touch again. We <coughs> thank you very much for uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, our next webinar, our upcoming webinar, will be on Industry 4.0. So if you are also interested, you will receive an information uh, on that. Thank you very much. And if you have further questions we wouldn't have answered today, don't hesitate to get in touch either with me, either with Petra Weiler, who is a coordinator of the Insight Project. And if you have some questions for Jerome, don't hesitate to send them to me and I will forward it them to, to him. Yes, yeah, sure. So, Jerome, thank you very much for your availability because it was quite challenging just after the, mm -hmm. uh, the 25th of May and this GDPR uh, coming into, into action. It was quite challenging for you to be available. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. I realize uh, this timing was quite short. <laughs> yes, it was, but I, I hope I, 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 you, you, you get the, the, the main key, the main information. And don't forget that yes. you have all these resources on the yeah. on the, 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 the website. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, talk to you later and see you on another webinar. Sure. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye.